The Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told him a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live in the face on the face of the earth, whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What I love about the whole notion of Advent is that the word actually means precipice. It means it's on the ebb of something. One of my favorite um, Jesus movement music peoples, um, this was second chapter of Acts, uh, the lead singer, um, Annie Herring said, uh, I don't know what's gonna happen the very next second. I don't know what God's gonna have me uh, sing he is, con he is in control, and I trust him to be in control to lead me down that path. And each second is a new beginning. Each second is a new beginning. With Jesus, we know a new beginning began, but it's something that we need to be reminded of to realize our full potential uh, before the day of the Lord comes, before the day of the Lord is here. We, we need to be aware. We need to be awake. We need to be, we can't be asleep in the light. And we must realize that um, Jesus comes down, is incarnate to us, and has a ministry on this earth with his disciples and disciples beyond the numbers of the 12, uh, which were to represent the 12 tribes of Israel, but even further beyond. We, we are to see a new beginning uh, with our witness, with our witness. And, you know, uh, all the four Gospels speak about the day of the Lord and Christ's return, which is very important for us because uh, Jesus needs, needs those who are, uh, have their hearts turned to him to see how God is going to create a new beginning the advent of our God. The advent of our God will come when, with Jesus' second coming as well. It'll be a new beginning, but there's gonna be a lot of stuff too that is gonna make people, as Jesus says, faint from fear and foreboding. And the powers are gonna be shaken. But we must, we must never let the foundation within us be shaken. So each week as we light these candles, we've just come out of a great uh, time of thanksgiving. 
Um, people may say it's a, a more of a celebration of uh, the founding of America and uh, those, those first settlers coming over and needing to have that uh, new beginning with those people who uh, came from the Mayflower and uh, all other places to, uh, to really be grateful, be grateful for the bounty of the world uh, that God has given us out of his amazing grace. This uh, past week was interesting, or weekend I should say, uh, having people uh, I haven't seen in quite a long time, well, though we did see them recently in September, um, that were a part of like the journey of life uh, at a particular time and place that is very different from how God has moved me forward in this here and now. And it was good, it was very good as well to see how these people were very changed. Very changed in a positive way. Maybe some stuff is still lingering. But I mean, you know, this is the problem of our, our uh, what things we fall weak with when we uh, have all the past in some senses Yes, we've learned from most of it, but then some of it is still there. And the people of the Old Covenant, um, they never, what was sad is that they still really could not accept Jesus as Messiah, which we know he, he is and was and always will be. But they're still looking, they're still looking in their, um, their new beginning has not really taken place enough for them. They perhaps are growing in hopefulness as we pray. Um, we pray weekly for the wars that are going on in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and, and all these other places. Uh, war is such an ugly thing. And that we pr we pray truly for the advent of peace there. But getting back to that whole thing of uh, people being affected by Christ and seeing him, and then his disciples hearing his words here. When you see these things taking place, you'll know that the kingdom of God is near. And he says, my words will not pass away. Jesus is the only true Lord and the only true God we follow. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. He is, he is the advent of a new life. And he, he, we know the spoiler alert with Easter. We are the resurrection people. We know. We know his in, incarnation. We know his coming here. We know everything we learned in discipleship school about the, the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit working through us. And then his rising from the grave and making that uh, amazing grace something profoundly real. And that profound reality is something that we need to have on the advent of every day. The advent of our God in our daily lives. When you begin the morning and you see that the, the sun is trying to make its light go through the clouds and you see it streaming you see, streaming like hands touching the earth. And I, you know, and you, you sense the magnificence of God beginning the day. Uh, yesterday when, um, or not yesterday, excuse me, the day before when we were um, going up to Sturgeon Bay, 
uh, some friends of mine and uh, we uh, saw some beautiful streams of light that were coming through the clouds and um, it was like little pockets of light just coming through like hands and it was a beautiful sight um, being that the our friends were very 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 definite city people they had not you know they're not even like used to seeing cows on the side of the road or you know uh, horses and, and things like that and rolling hills and I hopefully they didn't use all their camera space on their phone taking pictures but it's just that's just a little bit of each day it's a little bit of each day we are to roll with that day as we are getting prepared for the beauty and amazement of Christ coming into the world as we celebrate with Christmas may we never sacrifice uh, that great faith Chris Christmas Christ Christ's day or happy birthday Jesus this is uh, preparing for those days and seeing how God's amazing work works into those days. You know, it's kind of funny when you have pets. Cats do not like change at all. Our cats are, are, are very troubled by all the chaos of boxes and uh, me going through my mother's Christmas things to, um, you know, put them in uh, order <laughs> so I can hang things up um, you know they want they want to have the couches go back where they were they want to see you know all the boxes out of the way off the floor and you know and it's been said funny enough about congregations congregations uh, do not like change don't change me you're the one to dance and you know do everything for us you know it's again that uh, um, backwards discipleship or anti-discipleship problem of uh, the uh, institutionalized church the church right here the soul is the one that God needs us to be celebrating we are in the precipice of a new beginning we are in the precipice of a new year the advent of a new year and we can get we can let the world bog us down you know getting negative about things we're worrying is such an ugly word worrying like try are words I do not like and we've got to deep six those words we need to trust in God to uh, uphold our leaders who are helping us to uh, live and continue to be grateful not just in a sense of uh, for America but be grateful to be free and the sense to be no one has that right over us God is is the one who gives us our life God is the one who wants us to be witnesses who wants us to uh, uphold his righteousness in the world not with a big head the ego's got to um, disappear okay it's not for the warm fuzzies of, of uh, missionary work uh, it is it is for the will and purposes of God you know one thing that I think is kind of uh, a lovely thing to see is the amazing people uh, that work in healthcare. And no, I'm not going to talk about my job. I'm gonna. I'm just saying that you know uh, we see these people who have to work on Thanksgivings, who have to work on Black Friday, or uh, or working on Christmas Eve. Um, you know, I love that show Scrubs, and. Uh, <laughs> They're showing the people still getting silly and having fun and enjoying life while, while 
while sharing love, the love of God and compassion with others. You know, wearing reindeer um, antennae on and, you know, maybe wearing a, a Rudolph nose while they're going to see people. It, what was that movie, Patch Adams, uh, the late, great Robin Williams, was um, cheering up these people. And, you know, that's just one example. Whatever kind of ministry that we're doing, you know, if we're in retail and, you know, we're like... Uh, at the customer service line where people are like, I don't like this, I want more money, I want this, that. And, you know, they have the total wrong conception of, like, Christmas and celebrating with gifts. The biggest Christmas gift is the one Jesus gave us already. And uh, the greater gifts as well is being with family and friends and maybe even friends you haven't seen in a long time that you know, are now seeing a new picture of you. And that new picture of you can only start when you allow God to have you step into that new beginning. Jesus comes into our world uh, and helps us, as Paul uh, did in this great letter, uh, the Thessalonians, if we saw the Bible in chronological order, we would probably be like, oh my gosh, how bizarre. But um, the letters to the Thessalonians are technically what starts the canon of the Bible. And it sounds like a radio announcer. I mean, he's, he's giving great thanks to them. He's, you know, uh, saying to hold fast and, and be encouraged. Uh, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Just as uh, Paul and his uh, ministry team have done for them. And you know, that, that's great because whether or not things were put in a particular order to make accent certain things, if they were in original order, I think this would still be a fabulous way of, of, of being the precipice of the gospel of Jesus and how it affected people. Because we know the spoiler alert about Paul, okay? Paul had a major conversion. He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee who was completely converted and changed to Christ. He literally had to have the scales off his eyes fall. And that what's interesting about that, that, that image of scales on the eyes, we think of Moses uh, obeying God and put this, putting the serpent on that staff, and it turned to bronze. And, you know, we understand that as the medical symbol now, or it's, it's become adapted into that, but... Uh, there's... A, the serpent, we know, has been, uh, what, you know, for Genesis, the evil creature who talked Eve into uh, getting her and Adam into trouble. I still think it was partly his fault, but that's, you know, that's another time. Well, God needs us to live into that conversion, live into that conversion even when we're going into the precipice of how he enters this world and celebrating that, not only that memory, and we probably have a hard time saying it as memory, but it is a memory. It is, he came into our world, and now we have a parousia. He will be coming back to our world. We will not know the day or the hour. But, you know, it's going to be a whole lot of shaking going on, and there's going to be some trouble. But after that trouble, we're going to hear the psalmist singing. We're going to hear him saying, uh, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. Our hearts will be singing this. And it may be in a voice too small for those around us to hear. But when we branch out beyond ourselves with our hands 
voices and feet, that song will be heard loudly and that path will be very clear and that uh, we will see that amazing steadfast love of God in our faithfulness, in our faithfulness for us looking through the law, but looking through the law and acting upon it in divine love, the divine love of God the, through Christ Jesus, the Messiah. The Messiah is entering our world. Hopefully you can see, or it's not too hard to see, um, I uh, decided to buy a special chalice that's from a store in Israel. It took a while to come, but it is one of those celebration chalices of uh, being with family and thanksgiving. And um, it has the whole city of Jerusalem like in, in print and other different symbols around it. And you know, What is beautiful is having that imprint of Christ uh, etched upon your heart, uh, appreciating everything about how he came into the world, where he came into the world, and why he came into the world. And uh, we, what we must do at the, the, the Advent of the next second, at the advent of, of the next day, of the advent of this turning year. We are on the precipice of a new beginning, moment by moment. But those moment by no moments shouldn't be shaken by fear or trepidation, but should be uh, up, upheld uh, on that great foundation, Christ the cornerstone in our hearts. May we love and live this Advent season to singing happy birthday to Jesus in a few weeks and saying happy birthday, Lord, to the new life you've placed in me. May we, we, we live into that new beginning. Loving and gracious God, thank you for every day and thank you uh, for every way that you help us to grow and um, understand the things that have ended and the, the reason why they have ended and now uh, we are moving forward in something new. And help us to be new and teach that newness and right, righteousness of love to all uh, around us and everything that we do and say in your precious name. Amen.